Welcome everybody to our discussion this morning. I'm really excited. I was gonna be in Silly the other day and I found a few photos and I, I actually made an Instagram post with them and then I changed my mind and I pulled them down. But I found a t-shirt that was you know labeled Christmas cheer, right? This is Christmas cheer. I found a thing talking about, uh, oh, the Christmas spirit, excuse me, um, the Christmas spirit. And then I found, um, oh, essential oils. You know, Young Living, I think it is, has an essential oil that's called um, Christmas spirit. And then I found um, something else that talked about Christmas spirit being um, a good bottle of gin. <laughs> and um, oh, so there was another one and I can't remember what the last one was. But anyway, and so I just kind of was thinking, okay, what is Christmas spirit? You know, what is it to you? Okay, it's not probably any of those things, but what is it to you? You know, what does it mean? Um, there was another picture that I had attached with it that was just this picture of gold, glittery, pretty lights, you know, and outside. And it was so beautiful. And it was one that I actually found on an article in Scientific American that talked about the Christmas spirit and that it's a real thing. And I thought that was interesting, you know, in this more um, educational kind of um, science magazine that they would talk about the Christmas spirit and acknowledge that it's real. And it talked about how um, whatever it is, it makes people happier and we feel more peace and we feel more hope if we have the Christmas spirit. So um, I wanted to find out if you have some ideas about how you bring the Christmas spirit to you, to your own heart, so that it's with you and you're able to share it with your family because that's kind of the thing that we want to do, that we hope to do as mamas. We're the ones that are bringing Christmas spirit generally to our homes. Sometimes wonderfully our partners, you know, are if we've got a husband and he's with us, then um, he's a good help with that too. And so that's awesome and a great blessing. But as the mom who sets the tone in the home, I'm really curious to hear how you bring that Christmas spirit to yourself. And I know a lot of times that can be hard. A lot of times you can feel a little overwhelmed at Christmas time. Um, we'll talk about that too. What are the things that cause you to feel more overwhelmed than joyful? And I don't want anybody to feel guilty if they don't feel immediately just so excited and happy about Christmas because some people don't. So I'm going to open it up to you to see where you are right now, how you're feeling and um, where you want to go with this. For us, we just ditch academics altogether for the month of December and we just bake and do Advent stuff and service. And that's pretty much it. It's fun. We love it. And that makes a big difference, doesn't it? To not have the responsibilities. <clears throat> yeah. And they're learning just as much through service and being a part of, I don't know, whatever Advent type stuff we're, we're doing. It's sure. awesome. Sure. And then just interacting with their family and being together with all of you guys. That's a huge, that's a huge thing too. And a lot of good comes from that. Um, thank you for sharing that. I did that. That's what I did all the years was also, also stopped. I stopped all school stuff before Thanksgiving and and we never, it, it didn't hurt us. We didn't, my kids didn't fall short on anything. And there was so much learning going on. I wish I could give all mamas the confidence to do that, you know, to reassure them somehow that it's going to be fine. They're going to be fine. And you're going to be so much more relaxed, not so stressed out because you're not trying to do school on top of all the other things that a mom has to do in December. Okay. Other thoughts? Any other mamas want to share some thoughts about that? about how you feel about that, bringing the Christmas spirit to your, your own heart. Sorry, I'm going to come on again and add just Good. saying no to some of the, there are so many Christmas parties and things like that that are going on that you cannot possibly do all of it, you know? So I think just, I kind of love winter, especially now that I live in a really cold, uh, cold for me place, but I mean, just having the fire on and keeping our jammies on extra long and snuggling under the fire and reading Christmas stories and just, I don't know, it's, it's a, such a having hot cocoa at night, or, you know, whatever, it's just little traditions, focusing on the traditions and establishing 
that this is how we celebrate Christmas. And, you know, I don't know. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. And don't hesitate to pop on a lot, Kim. I love, like I said, I love and enjoy your comments. Um, I agree with that. I think anything that that forces us back inside home, I mean, we could be outside too doing stuff, but but being home with our families and our friends, um, those are great things. And those help us so much to connect with the people around us. <clears throat> those are important, significant things. Um, I think, yeah, giving us get permission to say no to things. Go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah, I think what's helped me this year is just being present, like doing the things with my kids. So instead of saying, okay, go put a movie on and watch the movie, like watching the movie with them and getting dad to watch the movie and all of us watch it together. Like just being in the moment, not being on my phone during the movie, um, getting excited for the advent calendar things, like doing it with them and being a part of it. I think that has helped me this year because I do feel like I have a lot more Christmas spirit here in my own heart rather than just trying to make sure the kids have it. Right. Yeah. So I'm just being a part of it and being present. Yeah. I think being present is huge. Um, I can see the difference as I look back on the times when I was um, really busy, maybe doing other projects or things, and I wasn't able to be there while they were doing all the fun Christmas things. I mean, that's kind of nuts. But I thought I was doing this better thing by maybe I, whatever it was I was doing, you know, making a bunch of gifts or making all the goodies or whatever. Um, but doing it with your family, it makes so much more sense. That's the thing is being together. It's that togetherness, that together time. So yeah, that's huge. That's significant. Other thoughts? Watching. It's okay if you don't. We're just soaking in stuff and we're thinking about a lot of things. How about Christmas music? Does that help any of you guys? Do, is that something you incorporate into your homes? Do you love it? Does it drive you crazy? How do you feel about Christmas music? Are there songs you love, songs you hate? <laughs> How do you feel about that? Jocelyn, were you going to share? Yeah, I can just share something really fast. Um, so sometimes we get tired of just the normal traditional Christmas music <laughs> and we get tired of hearing jingle bells and all those things over and over again because we have a playlist on our on our Alexa and so um, something that we've been doing is just trying to find music from like around the world and so we found like this PlayStation from Italy Christmas music in Italy has opera singers like Andrea Bocelli and other singers like that so it's been kind of fun to incorporate Christmas music from around the world because it it just brings like a different feel and it, I don't know, I, I love like Christmas music that is more, I, yeah, just more kind of instrumental. Some, like I love the piano guys um, and not always, sometimes I like, I enjoyed listening to the words, but sometimes I just like the instrumental music kind of in the background. So yeah. that's just what oh, I was going to say. Oh, no, thank you. And <laughs> Jocelyn, you're, you're Jocelyn Vance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so ladies, that's Venture with the Vances. So if you follow her on Instagram, that's that's who Jocelyn is. Yeah, hi. I love your <laughs> posts. I love following your posts. I love the beautiful pictures you've been posting lately. Oh, the final pictures too. And it's, it's really okay, helpful to see those come up in my feed. I love that. And that's good. Thanks. Yeah. Now, um, this week on Marco Polo, I received... Um, um, a message from my sister-in-law, Amy Gabbitas, who is on right now, but I don't know if she's able to come on. She often does this from work, but um, she works in the BYU Music Library. But she was at her um, orchestra rehearsal the other night and she just stuck her phone on her music stand and pushed record for a, you know, a couple of times and recorded as they were playing. And that was just so much fun to be a part of that and to hear that music being played live. And um, it was just beautiful. I loved it. I love listening to music. I love the instrumentals. I love the classical pieces. I would, I'm going to go look up that um, Christmas music from Italy. I, that sounds just perfect and beautiful. And I love the goofy, silly ones too. We have, we have all kinds. We have such a huge collection of crazy Christmas music. Oh, and you'll you'll love Andrea Bocelli. I just forgot to say, if you can find his Christmas album, it's really good. I don't know. Have you yes. heard of Andrea Bocelli before? Yes, yes. And I love his. <laughs> yeah. I love that. So thank you for that recommendation. Anybody else want to chime in on music? Are you taking advantage of Christmas list music wise on 
any of the ways that we get to, that we can do that these days or singing it with your family is that something that you do that's something we love we love to pull out the hymn books or christmas books and sing together and harmonize and all that fun stuff but that's something that we do a lot lindsay our primary did a really cool thing this year they delivered to each family an advent we got lots of little kids around here an advent thing and each day is a song to sing and some of most of them are in the children's song book some are in hymn book today's was actually on youtube and it was um but every morning there's a song to sing and then a little piece, piece of the nativity so it's been really fun because we start our day off with singing a christmas song and we just sing it and then that's it but i love it gives that it, makes it more intentional because otherwise i don't really know what you know we don't sing it all together very often but this gives us a song to sing yeah i love it i love that and songs and music are good memories for your children so i love that anybody else any things to share about music christmas music do your kids play instruments do they like to do that because that's fun too to encourage them to play christmas music christmas songs um okay we've got a, a chat comment also from rachel sharing a, a, a link to some music for us thank you so much rachel i appreciate that anytime anybody wants to feel free to get into that chat um, box and share links or information with us and i just made my box giant and i did not mean to do that okay um so any other sharings about music you know you can get together with extended family via zoom and sing songs or have different families sing or play or do those kinds of things. We did a primary program, our um, Gabbita side of the family last Sunday, because the kids really missed being able to do their primary program. So all of the different families got together on Zoom and the kids had different, some of them had talks, they had musical numbers and they were even, um, oh, they sang um, the child's prayer. And so some of the adults had pre-recorded their part and the kids had recorded. It was really nice. It was really sweet just to sit and watch all of them perform. And we love that. So we thought we might do something like that as the month of December continues, you know, some kind of a Christmassy thing. Lee Family Music on YouTube. Oh, okay, wonderful. They created a musical advent for every day in December. Great. There is so much out there. I love it. So many resources for things, ideas, if you're not coming up with them, you know, or you just want some new ones, great lists of things that you can do online. Also, what is the thing we want to remember about all of those lists of things? You know, you don't have to do it every day. You pick and choose the ones that you love and the ones that you work for your, that work for your family. I can't remember who was on here before. It was a younger mom sharing about how her mom had kind of done everything and was always stressed out and she didn't want to do that as a mom. She wanted to create some different, more relaxing traditions that didn't stress her out. Lindsay Bunting, were you going to share something? No, I was just nodding. So I was thinking when you said that, like just to be prayerful about the things and just, yeah, don't feel like you need to pick everything. Yeah, you know, from our discussion a few weeks ago, when some of you moms um, went dark for a minute and went and asked your kids, what do you love? What's your favorite part about the holidays? What do you really love? What makes it festive or fun or whatever? However you, you um, phrase that question, several of you asked your kids and came back and said, wow, my kids said it was just the lights, you know, or just something. And most of them was lights. There was something else. And I can't remember what it was lights and something else. Does anybody remember? But lights was one of the, the, the very top choice. Well, gosh, I can put more lights up. That's something that's a lot easier to do. I can cross a whole bunch of things off of my list of things that I think I have to do in December. I don't have to. I just have to put more lights up. I could put lights up every day of December and just keep adding and adding and adding and making it magical for my kids and be done. So I don't know. I don't know if that struck any of you, but that was huge for me. Just this, I felt like this is something that young moms really need to know is maybe the things that you've got on your list of, okay, we've got to make sure we do this and we've got to do this and I've got to do this and I've got to put this out and I've got to remember to, you know, whatever. Um, maybe a lot of the things on that list that you think have to be done don't have to be done. So if you can rethink that and make your life simpler, 
so that like Lindsay Bunting said, you can be present with your family. That's what they want. That's what your kids want. They just want mom to be there. I think I've mentioned before how many movies, I don't know all the, I, I, I know all the words because I was in the other room, you know, making snacks or treats or, you know, cleaning up dinner or whatever. But I sit down with them now to watch a whole movie. And there are so many scenes I've never seen before. And that's sad because I never sat down with them and watched, you know, the whole thing. So don't do that. <laughs> don't follow me on that. Jen, go ahead. Hi there. Hi. Um, with that, I had the, I've been thinking and trying to let my kids do more. <clears throat> like they're the ones who put the lights outside because they wanted them and I just wasn't going to get to it. So it's not like perfect, but it's, it's there and they love it. And then also I let them plot and letting them wrap presents for me if they're in a different box that doesn't show what it is. So I don't have to do, you know, just giving that to them because they also love to do it. And then it's less that I have to do. And also, you know, letting them own their, their chores more and not stepping in it. So you unmuted, your house must have gotten a little bit noisier, yeah? Well, um, that's wonderful, that's so good. And if we can let go of our, um, you know, for me, it's control issues. I have major control issues, um, if you haven't figured that out already. But, um, or perfectionist kind of, you know, you just, you want it to be a certain way. Um, if you can get past that, let go of that and let your kids, you know, invite them to be part of doing those things. I think that's awesome. Um, I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago, one of the moms shared that when we were talking about music, that sometimes she just isn't in the mood yet. She's got a lot of stuff going on or she's frustrated. She's overwhelmed something, but she knows that putting music on would be a blessing and that would help their family to start, you know, having a different feeling there in the home. She'll just assign one of her kids to go and you know, get the music started. You don't have to be the one to do it. You can encourage your family to be part of it. And that can help that Christmas spirit get to your house a lot faster. Jocelyn, were you going to share something else? Yeah, I was just going to ask some advice, I guess, from everybody. So um, we have a tradition of always going to cut down a Christmas tree, you know, in the forest, <laughs> going up to the mountains and cutting one down. But um, this year, everyone's kind of, well, at least my husband is thinking, maybe we don't need to have that tradition anymore. So does everyone like um, fresh cut tr Christmas trees or do you prefer artificial official trees? I guess we don't have an artificial one, so we probably would just go get one from the grocery store. But I'm just trying to decide if I should just drop that tradition yeah. <laughs> of cutting down Christmas trees from the forest. <laughs> Now tell me, um, before we all answer you, why do you, would you want to stop it? Is it a big, kind of a big ordeal to haul everybody up there and do that? Yeah, it's kind of a lot of work. I mean, this year it's good because usually it's snowing outside. And so we have to like go hiking in the snow and everyone's <laughs> sinking deep down into the snow and crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so this year it's actually not snowing. So that's why I think it would be a perfect year, but mainly it's my husband wants to simplify things so I keep thinking should I let go of that or should I just keep it up <laughs> so, yeah okay well let's hear from other moms <laughs> what you think <clears throat> help Jocelyn figure out what she's going to do if she's going to simplify I mean I'm all for live trees I but but we bought ours at a Christmas tree lot we don't have the luxury of going up in the woods to do that but how fun Jen were you going to share something I was just thinking, even if you don't do it for one year or you miss a few years, it can still be a tradition they remember. Yeah, I think so. I guess it's also hard because my son is um, 16. So he has like one year, one Christmas left at home. <laughs> so I keep thinking we have to fit everything in. This is like our last Christmas before every before our family's not together anymore. So I was just thinking I have to keep this tradition, but sometimes I have to think, okay, it's okay to simplify. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> other moms have I mean yeah Jen go ahead well he'll still remember all the other Christmases and 2020 it fits in with not doing the normal thing so yeah <laughs> you have to be untraditional it's too much for this year it's yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I remember the year before my first son left on his mission and I did that thing of trying to fit everything in you know one more this one more that one more this 
and I kind of made myself crazy. So I would highly recommend that you just kind of sit back in your chair, assume that posture. This is what I do when I'm trying to, to rethink things is I have to physically change my body. Like I have to kind of, okay, all right. I'm not forward like this, like anxious, like, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And what about this? And he's going to leave. And um, I got to make sure that this Christmas is extra wonderful because he only has, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, or because my kids are little, they're not going to be little for long. We've got to get all these, you know, I have to physically lay back, kind of sit back and go, okay, I need to think about this. I mean, obviously pray about it, obviously pray about it. But then as you're thinking, you know, um, when those things come up in your head again, you know, just sit back, you know, assume the posture, assume the position of relaxed mom. It's a facade. I know that's okay. Nobody else has to know that <laughs> only you do. So you assume the position and then you sit and you think, you think about it and you think, okay, all right, what do my kids really need? What do we, what do we have to do this year? What are my absolute musts? And then throw everything else out the window. Just do the absolute must. You'll be so much happier. You'll feel better. You won't be stressed out. Your family never, I mean, really, truly, if you were to ask your kids, um, and if they're little, I have to say, if you were to ask your kids when they grow up, because I have that advantage of having mine be, you know, my youngest is 18. So if you asked your kids, your young adult kids, what you really needed to do when they were little, <laughs> you'd think, oh my gosh, are you serious? I spent all those years doing all those things and it didn't really matter. They just wanted this and this. We could have done that every day, you know, light candles for dinner, you know, and put a fire in the fireplace, have hot cocoa, you know, the things that some of you've been talking about. Those are the things that make the magic. Mom being there doing stuff with your kids. Those are the things that really make a difference. So if some of these things on your list are kind of stressing you out, you're feeling a little overwhelmed about it, really seriously consider about just taking it off your list. And especially like with Jocelyn, if your husband is saying, maybe we simplify a lot of times that's heavenly father trying to give you a really direct message. <laughs> and it's, it's, there's such wisdom in listening to our husband's um, and sometimes we think, oh, but you don't understand because I, I have all these reasons, you know, why I need to do that thing. But so often that's the Heavenly Father's just kind of given them a little thought and that can prompt you to, to consider a thing that you maybe otherwise wouldn't have considered. And like um, Kim, oh no, I can't remember who said, um, but said just because you, a Jen maybe, just because you don't do it every year doesn't mean it's not a tradition. You know, we have lots of Christmas traditions that rotate. I have a couple of OCD children. I mean, I've personally, I've labeled them that. <laughs> they, but, um, and it's, you know, a Christmas rolls around. It's like, what? We're not doing what? We always do, you know, whatever it is. I mean, still at 20, whatever they are. Um, and I've just said, we don't have to do it every year for it to be a tradition. It's okay. We're going to do something new this time. You know, so if you can help it, try to try to mix things up sometimes so that they don't get so set on it that they won't let you um, have a holiday season without that thing. Kathy, were you going to share something? Well, okay, I will. I, I, you have to adapt sometimes to your circumstance. Like this year we are, it's entirely different. Last year was entirely different. We were at my in-laws stuck there for six weeks because our home was not livable in for the time and we were getting some things done. So now this year, we're not exactly in our place we want to be in. So everything's still upside down. So we adjust and, and we still make it fun and it's new traditions. It's, or it's new experiences, new memories, I should say, maybe yeah. not a tradition, but a new memory. And it changes with the day. Like some days it's going really well. And other days we forget it's even Christmas time. <laughs> so we had to remind ourselves and get something to, bring us back into the Christmas spirit. So, yeah, you know what? I think if, if even once a day as mom, you do something Christmassy that your family can notice and they, I mean, you might have to even, there is nothing wrong with, and I strongly encourage you announcing I mom, you know, we are doing this amazing, wonderful Christmas thing. You know, we're going to do this right now so that they know they're doing a really cool thing. Even if it's a thing that you do all the time, if you, 
regularly cuddle up in front of the fire and read a story, say, oh, isn't this wonderful? It's December and it's Christmas time and we're going to cuddle up next to this fire and read a story so that you've just planted that thought in their mind that, oh, this is a special thing. This is a really important thing that we're doing together. That's a good thing to help your children to learn, you know, what things are significant. Kathy. I agree with that 100%. Um, also, um, you know, our plates get really full, you know, like you were talking at Christmas time and, and um, even the most beautiful things like light the world that the church puts out. I, last night, I was so frustrated. And I was thinking, Rob, I told him, I said, I just don't have the time sometimes or the energy to put one more thing on my plate, even though it's beautiful. And I love it. And I should focus on that maybe first thing. But I so many things happen in my day and it just starts to feel like a burden. And if that's the case, maybe that's not the thing I do that day. It's okay if I don't do all of them or any of them. It's not doctrine or salvation related, but it is something to bless our lives. If it does bless our life and blesses our family, then we should do it. And if we have the moments and the time to bless others and share that, it's wonderful. But it, it, the, net, the negativity or the stress it puts on us should never be there in our homes and in our families. So anyway, just, just don't feel that guilt that I felt because it's not what it's intended to do. You know, right. anything extra does not need to be a guilt thing. So, right. Well, and I, I can't right now do light the world. I just, I looked at it. I signed up for the notifications and then I canceled it because I realized that this year I can't do that. And it's completely fine because if I were doing light the world, I would not be spending time with my family. And so in my year, this year, I mean, I know we would be doing things kind of together, but I wouldn't be present. I would be stressed out mom. And so um, they don't, when I tell you that your children want you to be present, they want relaxed mom. They don't want stressed out mom. <laughs> That's not super fun. Um, the other two days ago when I first got sick and I really wasn't feeling good, my kids were like staying away because they know I'm just super extra emotionally sensitive when I'm sick. I'm just like, oh, poor me. I'm so sick, you know. So they just, you got to be away because if you want to be happy. So um, they know that, but they want, they want the nice mom. You know, they don't want perfect mom. There's no such thing, but they want less stressed out mom. So don't add anything if it's making you stressed out and even gifts, you know, um, a huge, huge stressful thing is um, the gift buying. And if you're tight financially, like I am, you just, there's not much you can do. You just can do a few things, you know? And I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna have to make everything cause we don't have any money. I can't, I can't, I can't, you know? And so I just, I prayed and I asked Heavenly Father, what am I gonna do? Cause my kids are all grown, they'd be fine, but I still wanna make a Christmas, you know, and have some presents, whatever. And um, the very next, uh, I don't know if it was the next day or the day after I had a friend say, hey, I just had a prompting that I should send this to you. And she Venmo's me a lump of cash for Christmas presents for my family. So, you know, it's, we don't need that. That's not a need but it was something that Heavenly Father blessed us with. And um, so you just think about it and be prayerful about what you're doing with your family. Do not add extra pressure to yourself that takes away from you celebrating Christmas time, celebrating the birth of our savior, celebrating Santa and the lights and you know all the things that make Christmas magical. Don't let anything else take that away from you. You should get to celebrate Christmas too. You shouldn't get to Christmas, be, get to Christmas morning and just be so glad that it's over. You know, that's not how it's supposed to be. You should be enjoying the days with your family. And if that means cutting everything off your list, you know, and just having the bare minimum, then that's okay. I mean, I actually think that's wonderful. Give yourself the permission to do that. Um, and I'm, uh, I was not going to do this, but I'm going to share with you a couple of things just so that you have an idea of how crazy life can be, even without your kiddo, without little kiddos. So um, I'm in a situation right now where my husband has been underemployed for four and a half years and he is 58 years old and he is, um, he is not, he, he's a white male and he's old. You know, and so that's just not a great combination right now. And um, as people are trying to be careful and be, you know, careful about 
who they choose anyway, doesn't matter. Um, but that's our situation right now. And if we have prayed about it, we know that Heavenly Father has put us in this situation for a few reasons. And um, we know some of them, we don't know all of them, but we are fine. That's fine, a fine trial for us to have. It's very temporal. My children are healthy and safe and I consider it such a blessing. So I'm okay with this trial. Um, but add to that, you know, that in this month of December, my daughter, my daughter got engaged last month and is getting married this month. And she was going to get married in the temple in Idaho, where we're going to have to drive like two days before Christmas or after Christmas to Idaho. Then one of the temples in um, California opened up to be able to do receive endowment and do ceilings. And so we did that. Of course, then last week we got a call. Oh, sorry. Temple's closed. And so, I mean, we're like, oh, oh, okay. We're uh, what? you know, trying to figure out what's going on, what we're going to do. We have a bridal shower tomorrow. Lindsay Bunting is doing that for me, which is awesome and wonderful. Um, and then yesterday morning, we woke up to a really loud thud. We'd had wind all night and we went outside and one of our giant limbs from our eucalyptus tree was laying on top of our neighbor's roof and cars. And so that was lovely. Um, and so that was yesterday, the day that I was cleaning my house and getting everything ready for the bridal showers. So I'm on the phone with the insurance company till like 2.30 on and off and with the tree cutters and my neighbor and everything. So, um, oh, and on Wednesday this week, my kids went to the dentist, which is fabulous and wonderful. And that's a good thing. And, but they found out that both of them have all four of their wisdom teeth and all eight of those need to be extracted. <laughs> that's going to happen before the end of the year too. So that's super fun. So we add that on top of everything else. So, um, you know, these are all temporal things, but they, they come up and you have to deal with them and you have a little bit of maybe stress or anxiety as you're working through those things. But I have learned, and it's mostly, it's come with age, but you don't have to, you don't have to wait for age for it to come. I have learned that you can just assume the position, <laughs> just sit back and breathe and say, it's all going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay because it is, it always is. You might not be able to see the path. You might not be able to see the answers or the solutions right now, but if you really trust that heavenly father and the savior love you and your family, then you know that everything's going to be okay. Some of these things are things that are there for us to grow stronger from. Some of them are little tests to see, you know, are you still going to come to me? Are you still going to handle this the way that, you know, it works out the best for you? Or are you going to struggle with that a bit? You know, do you remember that I'm the source you come to for answers? You know, there's lots of reasons why trials happen in our lives. You know, some of them are just other people having their agency and it inflicts us. Um, Others are trials that really come to us because they help us become stronger. They help our children see us and how we maneuver through a trial and whether we use um, faith to get through it or, or not, you know, and I think even this whole year of 2020, all this craziness has been a fabulous opportunity for families, for children to see their mom, their dad, there, you know, whoever, um, either be faith-filled or fear-filled, and they get to decide which one of those responses they feel comfortable with, and they like, you know, you have an opportunity to do a lot of, this really went in a totally different direction, but, oh, sorry, but you have an opportunity to really strengthen your relationship with your Savior. I mean, we all do to make that relationship stronger, to get a deeper commitment um, to Heavenly Father and the Savior to be that whole, you know, hear him, to learn and spend more time figuring out how we receive personal inspiration, because that blesses our family so much. Um, I just, this, it's been a really interesting thing to see how the world has changed and become so negative and so ugly and, and it, and uh, it paints people who actually care about people as being people who don't care about people and vice versa. And it's just nuts. It's upside down, but that's okay. We knew that was going to happen and we understand about that. And um, I'm probably going to lose some people because they're not going to like that stance, but 
I hope not. It doesn't mean I don't care because I'm over and I'm helping people and I deliver stuff to people who don't want to come out and who are really concerned or who are in those categories that need to be careful. I serve and I help those people and I wear my mask when I go see those people. Um, but I think it's really important to realize Heavenly Father is giving us an opportunity to be with our families. That's not bad. You know, and even me, like, I don't need to complain or feel, feel frustrated that I don't get to have a whole bunch of other people over. He's, he's telling me here, just stay home. You know, here, there's this crazy thing going on, but you get to stay home with your family. You don't have to go to the concerts and to the games and to the, the parties and to the, all the things out there. You have this special permission this year to just stay home with your families. And that's a great thing. How could that possibly be a bad thing? We need to take advantage of this opportunity and say, okay, so for this 2020 Christmas, what am I going to do to, to be more connected with my family and to have a different, more meaningful Christmas this year? Cadence, were you going to share something? Okay. All right. You, things happen and people are moving around and you change position in, um, in the zoom. So, um, but I love that some, that more of you are, um, staying on screen, I mean, going off and on. And I understand that because you've got stuff going on, but I appreciate it. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, I need to look at the chats. You ladies are so wonderful. Okay. Going all the way back. Okay, so make sure you note, and I will, I, I promise, I will get, copy these all and put them in the email, but Rachel shared this Spotify album that's Christmas stuff. That's wonderful. I love that. Jocelyn shared with us about the musical Advent for December on YouTube. How wonderful is that? Kathy, yeah, I love that. Names of Jesus Advent cards. And Amy, I think if it adds to the season, ask him and your family what traditions they feel are essential. You may be surprised by what they really care about. If it's just a stress, then the feeling in the home is stress. If it adds to connection in the spirit, then yes, for sure. But if it adds stress, a big no. 100% agree with that. That's so true. Um, so wise. And Ida, welcome. Um, so yesterday for light the world, we were asked to share something that helps bring us peace and calm. Honestly, that was a little hard for me considering the last couple of days as panic and anxiety were trying to rob me of peace. Normally peace isn't so challenging, but in these times it is so hard to hold on to. It is difficult to understand unless you have experienced it, but it is something like the feeling you might have if a man with a gun is breaking into your house or walking through dark woods, hearing something following you. That's horrible anxiety is such a, a horrible thing. Um, it is not happening, but that is how you feel. And your body is acting like that is happening, right? So you, all your adrenaline starts run, running and all that. Um, sorry, she continues. So if you can imagine those feelings, you have some idea what anxiety feels like for me. The fun part is you don't actually know why you're feeling that way. And sometimes trying to pinpoint it makes it worse in the long run because it makes you start avoiding life. So you won't experience those feelings and that can quickly make your world and life very small. It is an awful thing. Um, I think I am possibly a natural anxious person, but it wasn't until postpartum with my last two babies that I started having panic attacks when the fear would become overwhelming. It took me some med yeah, some medicine and counseling for a time to get past that really challenging time. Since then, I've been doing really well. But every once in a while, stress starts to build up and weigh me down. And in those moments, anxiety tries to sneak back in and take my peace. The last couple of days, I have been at war with this life stealer anxiety. However, even in the midst of this, and what helps me get through is my greatest sources of peace. It is through prayer and drawing on the words of Christ and leaning on him. It is hard to read scriptures or even listen to an uplifting message. Again, try to imagine doing those things while being followed in the dark woods or when somebody is breaking into your home. You have to have things stored in your mind and heart, I think, and you hang on to them for dear life. Oh, Ida, I'm so sorry. That's a thing you struggle with. I just love you. And I'm sorry. That's one of your trials. You have to have things stored in your mind and heart, I think. And you, oh, you said that. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Okay. I'm sorry. 
everybody just be patient with me and you hang on to them for dear life. I remember on a particularly dark postpartum day after my son was born that I kept asking for help from Heavenly Father. I just kept praying. Then in a moment of clarity, the words from 2 Timothy 1.7 came into my mind and I just kept repeating them until the panic subsided. I didn't even know that I knew that verse and I couldn't tell you the reference, but later I found it. It hangs on my wall now as a reminder to me. Um, this is one example out of so many moments when I felt the Savior reaching out and holding me. I could feel his peace and comfort, even if but for a moment. I knew I wasn't alone. He was there with me and he wasn't going to leave me. That feeling of peace renewed my faith that he can do all things to help me and a hope that he would. I held on to that so tightly, trusting that he knows best and somehow it would be okay and I could get through. <clears throat> oh, I could get through it. So this is my source of peace. Christ is my greatest and surest source of peace. And I feel that peace when I pray and listen and reflect on his words and teachings. Gosh, Ida, I love that. Do you, um, that scripture from 2 Timothy 1.7, can you share that? Because I don't know what, which one that one is. Or did you already? I'm looking. Oh yes, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I should have known you would have had that on there. Um, that is wonderful. And I, I understand when it's noisy, it is easier to share those things. Um, and for any of you have, who have those kinds of feelings, you know, that anxiety or panic attacks, things like that, know that we love you and are so sorry that that's something that you struggle with. Gosh, you know, we all have those, all of our different trials, but Ida is right on. That is, Christ is your source of peace. And having those beautiful things stored in your mind and in your heart, they have to be there so that you can pull from them when you're having a dark moment. I love that you shared that. Kathy, were you going to share? Okay, no. All right, just checking. All right, and then I passed over and I want to go back to Kathy shared the words, I love, I heard the bells on Christmas day. And <clears throat> these are, <clears throat> sorry, two of the verses. It says, and in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men, sorry. And then I love this. I love this song because I love that contrast from the negative, you know, the despair to the positive. And the next verse says, then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Gosh, I'm sorry my voice is so bad. Um, that I heard the bells on Christmas Day is a Christmas carol based on the 1863 poem Christmas Bells by American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The song tells of the narrator's despair upon hearing Christmas bells during the American Civil War because hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. The carol concludes with the bells carrying renewed hope for peace among men. I love that. I, it's just so, so beautiful. Rachel, welcome. It's good to see Hi. you. Hi, good to see you. Um, there's another part of that story that really touches me with that song. And it's just so sad. And just like Ida is having such a sad time in her life, um, Longfellow, his wife, her dress caught on fire and she burned to death. And then he had his son at war and he really was in despair. And so I think once I learned that story, that song, I've always loved that song, but that song just was even more special to me. So I think learning the songs like the stories behind the Christmas songs are really meaningful and they'll make those songs even more special for you. So thank you for sharing that. I, one of my kids brought the rest of that story to our attention just, um, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. And yes, and there's so many that feel despair um, and that aren't feeling hope. And there are so many ways that we can help with that. Kathy, you were going to share. Uh, his one, one more thing to add with that because it's an incredible story is his son was uh, critically injured also he had just found out that his son was critically injured in the war and so when he wrote that and so it's 
really interesting how when we go through hard times that we find the solace and the peace in the Savior. And that has stood the test of time all these years that we still feel that in those words. Yeah. I mean, so many people on this earth have been so inspired to carry on the message of Christ. And every year at Christmas, it always amazes me of the love in the, in the, and the peace that comes to such a crazy world, just for a small moment that we can pause and reflect on the Savior collectively as people on this earth. And it just happens because it's a tradition or it's our holiday, but the underlying feeling is that God is in charge and he wants us every year to stop and pause and think about his son and his son's birth. And even the most um, unbelieving atheist, you know, person on the earth can still celebrate Christmas. And he's made that possible through traditions like Santa Claus and, and service and giving, you know, to charities and things. And that's great because it's their little small piece. And someday they'll understand, right? Why they do that. But I love Christmas for that, that reason that it brings us all together for Christ, you know, and, and to acknowledge his love and his comfort in our lives. So I love, love, love this Christmas Carol. Thank you for sharing that too, Rachel. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, ladies. That's beautiful. Really beautiful. I was thinking about um, this really interesting um, situation that we as moms find ourselves in at Christmas time. Here is this time where we are celebrating the birth of Christ and we understand, we know what it is that we're celebrating. And so we're bring, we are celebrating this being who brings us peace when we are in despair, who brings this feeling of comfort and love and hope, you know, when things are going so wrong in our lives. Um, the one who lifts us up, the one who brings us, you know, this love and good cheer, all these good feelings. This is who we're celebrating and we are getting stressed out over that same holiday that we're like, do you, do you see that that's kind of opposing? <laughs> that doesn't really make a lot of sense. And he never asked for all the things that we put on our lists, you know? Um, so I think, I think taking a whole bunch of things off your list, if they add stress to your life or your family is a really smart thing. I think that adding more things on your list, if they bring more Christmas spirit and they, add a whole bunch to your family and they don't stress you out is a good thing. I think that it's such an individual thing and we have to look carefully at our own families, our own situations, our own hearts and find out what do I need to do this time? You know, what is going to work for me and, and for me this year? Like I told you, this one is different for me. It's going to be different. Uh, some of the same things are going to happen and some of them aren't and that's okay. And you have to do that and prayerfully, prayerfully approach these next few weeks and really consider just going and sitting down with your kids, being with them in the same room as they are, light a fire in the fireplace, put on Christmas music, put on a Christmas movie, read Christmas books, whatever it is that does that for you. Go out and walk in nature with your kids. Um, but just relax and enjoy this Christmas season and soak up all of that hope and peace and all of those good feelings that can come if we, you know, relax and try to let that happen. I just, and I'm not saying that this is for everybody, but so many times we're the ones that add the extra things on our plate, either by choosing to add them or by not saying no times that we, that we really could, we really can say no. And it's okay. And especially this year, we have extra permission to do that. And I also have to add just so that I, I'll often say things, you know, and I'm being kind of flippant or whatever, and I don't want to make anybody feel bad for any of you who are, who are genuinely fearful and concerned about this situation, the things that are going on and on right now, I do not mean to make light of that. And so I want to share that with you. Um, I just, I love that faith conquers fear. And that is kind of my motto. And I've been through a bunch, not 
as much as lots of people on this earth, but I've been through stuff that's hard for me. You know, they're my trials. And so they're kind of made for me and made to be difficult for me and for my heart. And I choose faith. I am not going to be afraid. I am going to choose faith and hope. And that might be really kind of Pollyanna, you know, but I, it works for me. <laughs> And so, um, but I never want to belittle what anybody else is going through because we each have our different trials. And for somebody else, it's going to be a lot harder to put on that face and, and to face the world um, like that. So I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but I sure hope you know that I would never want to make anybody feel bad or belittle your, how you feel about things. I'm going to mute myself to give you the ladies time to talk and I just need to rest my voice for a minute. Can I share one more thing? The other day I was um, walking through a store doing a return and a couple stores, it was my return day kind of going through things. And um, I was overwhelmed with the flood of stuff and options and glitz and glamour everywhere. And I thought, there's not enough people on this earth to buy all this stuff, you know? And, and then I thought of all of the things we don't need. And truly my life is more simple today than it has ever been. And I live extremely simple life right now with what um, our family circumstances are, but um, I really don't need all that stuff. I, have, I don't have a place for all that stuff. So I kind of think, where does all this go? And why is it all here? And it's somewhat of a distraction, I think. And although some of it's pretty awesome looking and appealing, and it's hard to walk out and go, wow, I guess I don't have anything, you know, <laughs> in, in, a, in a certain kind of mindset. But I, I feel like um, all of that can get overwhelming when we go out and about and see things. And um, the crowds and the chaos and, and the the push to buy so much and I just I'm so grateful when we come home to our homes when I come home to my home and I realize this is what I need and it's beautiful and it's simple and it's okay and it feels strange that I only need this I feel like it's something wrong with me that I don't need all of that stuff because certainly there are more glitzy glamoury women and, and homes and fancy this and fancy that that I am not enjoying but um but and sure wouldn't we all love to you know have the mansion with the perfect everything but i don't think that brings happiness i think it's just an ex another experience and i think that our happiness comes when we appreciate and are grateful for what we have and we see the beauty in it for me anyway for me that's how i feel i feel most happy when i feel grateful if i'm not being grateful i'm not feeling happy and so i loved when president nelson talked about gratitude and then watching all that week all the many things that people were grateful for and how beautiful that was an experience to to see um so many people recognizing the beautiful blessings in their lives and what they've been given and for me to recognize in my life and my kids talking about it, it it's been so wonderful and so coming into christmas with that mindset is really nice this year because we don't have it the normal way we've had it. And, but we can still love it and enjoy it because of the gratitude for what we have. And remember that what we have, because that's most important for me anyway. But that's, do you guys feel that way when you go into stores? Is it overwhelming sometimes when you walk in and go, oh, I don't shop a lot in the stores for things like that. So I walk in and go, holy cow. And I, it, it really knocks me over sometimes, but this year for sure did. have actually felt that way about shopping um, this year because we've been doing online shopping and it's um it's actually been nice because the kids say I want this or I want that and to keep it pretty just to their list of what they want when you go out shopping I don't know I'm an impulse buyer I don't like to shop, but I am an impulse buyer, especially when it comes to my kids. So I'm like, oh, that'll fit in their stocking or that'll fit, you know, 
oh, this person has five presents and this one only has four. I only have two kids. They don't need 10 presents each. Um, but they're close enough in age where I kind of have to treat them like twins. So it's, someone's going to get upset if they don't get the same thing. But it's been kind of nice because not going to the store, especially with them, they're not constantly going, well, we both want this and we both want that. They've been very individualized this year and not going into the stores. I haven't had to impulse buy based on how they feel as well. And so it's been that kind of chaos in my life has been nice not to have this year. But I don't know, that didn't make much sense, but there you go. I'm just popping on to say, yes, it made a lot of sense. I just, I don't want you guys to not get feedback since I'm not on there. And Kathy, I loved what you said. I get so wowed by just sparkling things and pretty things and polka dots and stripes. And I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. I get wowed by it. And so I'm so much better if I just stay home. If I stay home, I don't miss any of it. I don't know what's out there. And so I don't miss it. And when I go out and go shopping, then it's like, oh gosh, I don't want to see that. You know, so I just go to the grocery store, <laughs> go home, take my husband with me every time. So he can go, we don't need that. We don't need that. <laughs> that helps a lot. <laughs> it also helps not having any money to buy any of it. So that works too. Other thoughts? It's funny, this talk that came up because I just been but it just was brought to my attention from one of the gratitude posts on Facebook about minimalism so I've been like I need to look into that but it seems like a big overwhelming change to to try to make <laughs> but a good one so yeah yeah no thank you for sharing that I that's something that I keep thinking that I'm I mean I'm working towards it it's going to take me I'm peeling off my stuff in layers like an onion you know and that's not you don't see a lot of progress, but there is progress. I am, I'm working toward a goal. Yeah, I find a lot of happiness also in yard selling. And I don't know if any of you ladies do that, but I find brand new, almost perfectly wonderful things. And sometimes my kids get that for Christmas and it's wonderful because why pay 40 for it when I can pay a quarter? So <laughs> I mean, I find some amazing uh, treasures, but um, not not all the time, but a lot of the time. So I think it, if we get creative, it can be really fun, like a treasure hunt. What we're gonna what we're gonna do for Christmas and things. Absolutely, that's a great idea too. Because I'm all about thrift stores and yard sales and all that stuff. I've been doing that for years since high school. Everything I wore in high school was thrifted stuff because I was I was rebelling against all the rich kids at school. <laughs> my own personal rebellion that affected no one but Megan Norp you know she was gonna try to join today if she could and she does that she finds the funnest things at thrift stores and it's so fun to watch what she can create from the things that she finds but um, also I wanted to share I'll, I'll share in the comments her post that she put on Facebook yesterday it was beautiful and um, but she seconds this idea of slowing down and enjoying the season and simplifying and really taking the time to reflect on what we're doing right now this at this Christmas season and what's most important. So I'll just put that in there. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. Please do. I loved that. And now that since I'm not on Facebook, I um I am missing those positive po posts, but I have to tell you for me, it's so nice. I just taken a lot of time. I mean, I could have exercised self-control, but you know, <laughs> this was a lot easier. <laughs> But um, for me, it has just been nice and it's given me a little more time with my family and I'm really enjoying it. I've also picked up an old um, hobby. I told you guys that I think, but crocheting, you know, and so then I'll just take my stuff and I go sit where my kids are. And that at least keeps me right there with them. So um, I hope they feel like I'm there and engaged. I hope I don't learn years from now that, you know, well, mom was sitting there crocheting, but she was not paying any attention to us or something because I think I'm doing this great thing. I guess I could always ask them, huh? We watched um, a Muppet Christmas Carol last night and I love that story. I love Muppets, so it helps, but I just love that. I love the change of heart that he has at the end 
And he talks about carrying the Christmas spirit throughout the rest of the year. So I think we like need to remember this month and the way we feel and then try to keep it going. I know it's hard when the lights come down and you know, you don't have those constant reminders all around you, but I think that's a goal of mine to just keep it going and not just do it at Christmas time. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, is we could do that if we, if we would associate more of these calm, relaxed, lovely things with the holiday season rather than all of the crazy stuff. Because we can keep doing all of those calm, beautiful, relaxing things. Hi, Ida. It's good to see your face. Were you going to pop on and share? Sure. <laughs> um, I just, I just was a little late today, but I just loved listening to the conversation from everybody. And I always have a really big plans for Christmas and it doesn't really seem like they're that big, but then I'm like going through with my plan and then I'm like, oh crap, we're forgetting this and this and this. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such a failure. <laughs> and I have to really dial that down a lot, like so much. And um, as somebody else mentioned to their husband and my husband said to me, you know, you just need to like, maybe just do one thing. Like you can't do like 20 things all day long. You can't sit and read Christmas stories all day. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> But he's like, just one thing, and then let them go play, and they have that time to, um, you want to see too? They have that time to, like, have a memory built, made with you, and that you're relaxed, and then, like, then they can go enjoy whatever, you know? I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's right. That's what I need to be doing. And so I've been really, like, trying hard to just be like, okay, what is one thing that I feel like maybe I could do today? And that's it and just taking it one day at a time and I don't have to and I can plan like you know for the month like maybe I'll try this or have a you know a buffet of things that I can choose from <laughs> but you know it's it isn't about the presents you know like there was 11 kids in my family and we were uh really poor for most of my childhood like um and we don't have a lot of money and there's been Christmases where it's been really tight too and those presents I don't remember I don't remember any presents that I got from my parents for Christmas I, I really don't and I know that we got things at times and my, my mom made stuff for us sometimes or whatever but it was just the time spent together like I know you talked about that before Lori it was like the time that we got together we were singing or um, you know decorating the Christmas tree or doing those things that are just really simple and letting people get involved and sometimes that's hard also because I tend to be like it has to be perfect <laughs> so you guys can decorate the back half of the Christmas tree and I do the front <laughs> maybe that's just me <laughs> but anyways so like I feel like but those are the things if we can let go and let go of that standard that we really set for ourselves because that's like, like for me personally like that's where an anxiety comes from is like having these standards that you're putting on yourself or these ex expectations of yourself they're not really coming from anybody else letting go of those and saying you know those aren't important let's just do these things and so yeah we can do it we can do it that's that's all I have to say <laughs> yeah oh that's good that's good we need to you know you have little, your little mantras right and we can do this we can have a simple Christmas we can do this I remember seeing a thing, I'm sure you've all seen it, like, I don't know, Pinterest or something that said, like, it was just an idea for gifts. And it was like something to read, something to wear, something, 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 something. But it was like four things. Do you remember, Lindsay? Want, need, wear, read. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you could do your own. And it could be one thing or two things. I mean, it just, we lo have loved in years past to do Christmas Explosion. And we... We don't buy our children's clothes. We don't buy their toiletries. We don't buy makeup. We don't buy any of the things they want during the year. We don't buy their shoes. Ever since they were 12 and able to start making money, we've encouraged that. And they've bought all those things for themselves because they learn really great things about money and how to spend it and how to save it and things like that. For example, my teenager who is getting, trying to earn money for his mission and his job ended back in because of COVID, right? February, January. He had like $4,300, something like that. 
well, he's been, he invested it back then because he knows enough to know that in a situation like we're in, that there are opportunities to make money and he's up to $7,100 just from the, just from playing around and moving his stock and stuff around and super cool. So you teach them these principles when they're young, right? But anyway, we, they bought all those things for themselves. So at Christmas time, we would really go, you know, go all out and get things for them. And a lot of it would be things they needed, but we were getting them for them instead of them having to pay for them. And then some extra fun things and some family fun things and books and movies and things like that. So, and we would hold everything back. Like we put a few presents under the tree and they'd have their present, their presents to each other under the tree and we'd hold everything back and then put it out Christmas morning. And that was super fun to have this, you know, but at the same time, my kids always do that, you know, on, there were a couple of years where we had very small Christmases because we needed to. And that's been the last few as well, but um, they don't care. They don't care. It doesn't matter. It's not the gifts. We did that just for the kind of fun, magical part of it, but not because gifts are the important part of Christmas. You know, it was the, it was the fun and the planning and the time together and stuff like that, but the gifts, they're fun but they don't matter. So don't stress yourself out about the gifts. Um, the baking is fun and I love it. That's one of my favorite parts of it. But I have a list of like 24 different things I wanna bake, you know, and I want them all to be ready all on the same day so that I can make plates for everybody and have everything. And I'm not doing any of that. I mean, I'll bake what we want to eat at home on just this day or that day when I feel like doing it. I'm not doing any of the crazy. Um, and. Uh, it feels nice to have a, a really short list of things that I'm going to do. My list is I'm going to sit by the fire. I'm going to hang out with my kids. I'm going to eat Christmas food and not even feel bad about it for a second. I might even gain weight. I don't care. It's Christmas. Um, I'm going to go look at lights. But when I want to and because I want to and not because I have to because it's on my list, you know, and I'm going to sing Christmas songs and play Christmas music. And that might be it, you know, and that's good. That's going to be a good Christmas for me. How about you? What are you going to do? What are you going to make sure happens? Or what are you going to not worry about so that you can really have an enjoyable Christmas this year? I mean, you don't have to tell me, but, but what are you going to do? That reminds me of that talk from conference. What am I going to? start doing what am I going to stop doing I forget who yeah. gave the talk but one I was going to yeah one of the sisters. <clears throat> I was going to say um the five love languages one of them is gifts giving receiving gifts that's like how some people show love and feel loved is through gifts it's not mine and so I don't understand it but my husband that is his love language and so I've been trying to simplify Christmas by not exchanging gifts with family members, like save your money, we'll save ours and we'll just like get together and we'll, especially the adults, like we'll exchange with the kids, but the adults can just, we can go out to dinner or do something fun together. But then I realized it was really bumming out my husband. He's like, you're taking Christmas away. <laughs> so I had to remember that, you know, that's the gifts are important to those people with that love language of gifts and so they don't have to be big and they don't have to be stressful but um yeah I don't know why I shared that but just oh. sometimes what's simple for one family may not like right. may ruin Christmas for yours so <laughs> exactly exactly that's why it's so personal and you have to figure it out and my husband's is too it's gifts and you know and, and acts of service so uh, you know, so we have, to, I have to create something, but on the years when that stresses you out, then you just say, sweetie pie, I'm going to be doing this while you do the gifts. <laughs> here's the, here's the stuff. Here's your budget, you know, and, uh, see how that goes. Good luck with that. <clears throat> but yeah, it has to be what works for your family. Well, I think given that my voice is, um, not, cooperating with me. I think that we will cut it short today. Um, I hope you're okay with that. But I loved your input. I love the things that you ladies have to share. I just love seeing your faces. 
and seeing your names even if you're not able to be on screen. I love it. I love knowing that we have a chance to spend some time together. And that's awesome. And I think the fact that you're doing this today is really awesome. Hi, Amy. Um, <clears throat> it's really great because you were taking a minute for yourself. And that shows that you're learning how to do that. If that's not a thing that you've done well in the past, you're doing it now. And that's great. And you need to give yourself a good pat on the back for that because um, that's a hard thing for us to do sometimes. So, <clears throat> so sorry. Um, but anybody else, does anybody else have anything they want to add before we go? I had to ugly cough, so I had to take myself off of, off of the thing. So Amy, I shared, I wish that I was smart enough and knew how to share your actually, your actual playing from the Marco Polo, but I loved that. That was fun to hear you playing in person. You are so amazing. No, I, I honestly, I'm glad for those Marco Polo shots, just a reminder of like, what does make me happy during Christmas? Because I was not excited about it. I think just the whole year has been weird. And so well, maybe like, brain surgery. I don't know. That might have made the year a little bit weird for you. Well, yeah. And just what we had planned on doing for Christmas probably won't happen. And then anyway, so it was good for me to sit and enjoy the neck cracker. The music is beautiful and happy. And I was going to say, I actually just found a new Christmas carol that I love. It's called Sweet Little Jesus Boy. It's an African spiritual. If, if people don't know that song, go listen to it and really listen to the words. It's beautiful. And I'm grateful that I came across it this week. It made my day. I just needed to hear that song. Something uplifting. That. And um, as far as, yeah, it's a beautiful hymn. And I also just, it makes me happy that when we pull out the Christmas books, just our sheet music, we have stacks and we have way too much. It's ridiculous. But um, my kids have been playing piano for fun more just because they have all these cute duets that they can play and enjoy or even pulling out the primary songbook and trying to learn new songs in there. It makes me happy. So the music I part is it. a good thing. I love it. Yeah. And Amy, could I ask you to maybe send me a little email with some just some music that um, ideas for people to listen to at Christmas time that they might not be familiar with? And I'll yeah, put that I in the email. Yeah, and I actually, my family, my side of the family just put together a full production of a nativity song. I'll send you that link as well. We just got it finished. And it's just a family nativity, but a song that my aunt wrote and we sang it. It was such a lovely experience to get together with cousins and aunts and uncles that we haven't done much this year because of the situation. And my kids will never forget that experience of making something cool with second cousins. It was good. No that's pleasure. awesome. And that's, that's on YouTube. So you could share the link to that. Yeah, it's okay. on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Send me those things. And then just some, even like the nutcracker, even things that are familiar, familiar to you, but might not be familiar to everybody else. You know, just some good Christmas pieces. I know kind of a variety because you've got a lot of them. Um, I mean, I didn't an old Harry Connick Christmas album at an antique store last weekend and it just makes me happy it's such a just spry upbeat let's just have a good time and enjoy yeah. the spirit yeah good <laughs> well, I hope no <laughs> yeah I hope that um this is helping a little bit you know just giving permission to take some things off your list just scratch that off the list and don't worry about it and go enjoy just sit back and relax and enjoy a little more than you were going to do this year so that you enjoy Christmas so that Christmas morning comes and you think I love this time of the year you know I've loved this month you're gonna not do it perfectly none of us are we never do but we get better every time we get better every single time. Every day for me is I'm going to do better today than I did yesterday. And sometimes I don't, uh, you know, oh, well, hmm, I guess I'm human, you know? And so you try again the next day. It's okay. Show yourself some grace. You know, you do it for other people. Why not do it for yourself? 
um, that's going to bless your family. It's not a selfish thing. The negative stuff that comes in our heads comes from the other side. <laughs> and we need to remember that when we get that, oh, but you're not, you're, you have to do this and your family needs this. And you, what about that? And you always do this. That's coming from the other side. So you let it go. You let it go and you do the things that actually matter to help your heart have the Christmas spirit and help your children and your family, your husband, all of everybody else that you nurture and take care of, you help them to feel it as well. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope that works for you. If you have tips, ideas, things that are working, please share them. Go on that email and share with me. Um, so it's not a vacuum. <laughs> and then I can share those with other people. I think sometimes just, and it's fine, but just because I never hear back from anybody, I, I don't know if it's worth it. So I hesitate to do it because I'm not sure if you just think, oh, another email. So if they're valuable to you, let me know. If you have things you'd like to share with other mamas, let me know and we'll put them out there. So thank you so much for today. I loved it. I loved it. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And if you think about it, would you pray for me <clears throat> that this, I have a, I have a tendency to go very fast downhill and get very sick really easily. And so I am just, I'm going to get a blessing right after this and hopefully I can hang on. So if you would do that for me, my friends, I would really appreciate that. So thank you. I love you. Have a great weekend.